Hello, I'm Eve Gallagher and I'm currently a lecturer in Modern British and Irish History at the University of Cambridge. And I'm here today to talk a little bit about my book, Ireland in the Great War, A Social and Political History, which is currently shortlisted for the Royal Historical Society Whitfield Prize. So I want to take no more than five minutes of your time just to say a little bit about the book, some of its findings. And this picture, which I'm now going to try my best to share with you via these lovely new recording things called Panopto. This picture is the reason I became very interested in this project. It is taken from a cracked glass plate, which is found under piles of rubbish in the museum in County Cork in Southern Ireland. And it shows a turnout of people at the unveiling of the Great War Memorial in Cork in March 1925. Now to you, this might not seem like a big deal. War memorials are probably 10 a penny in the towns and villages that you come from. And I'm sure that the 11th of November is a very familiar date in your yearly ritual of remembrance. So what then was so different about Ireland? Well, this act of remembrance in Cork was very special because few people today would know or admit that remembrance was so common in the decades following the conflict and that the war dead elicited such mass sympathy across urban Ireland. Just six years before this photograph was taken, Irish nationalists had embarked on a war with Great Britain in an attempt to gain independence, which resulted in partition and the modern shape of the United Kingdom that we're very familiar with today. The legacies of this conflict and the Irish Civil War which followed came to be the formative historical markers which have shaped the collective Irish national memory. This image is therefore a metaphor for the memory of the First World War in the second half of Ireland's 20th century. It was left to gather dust, it was gradually forgotten about, and it eventually became the bottom of a pile of rubbish, disowned in preference for events which clearly gave sense and made sense of the Irish rise to independence. The historians amongst you might wish to know what the existing historiography said about Ireland in the war, but the scholarship yielded very few answers about why so many people turned out in this day. The war was barely mentioned in most accounts of the war years, leaving the impression that it passed Ireland by. When it was mentioned, historians talked about how it fostered demands for independence and political divisions between Irish Unionists, who were largely Protestant, and Irish Nationalists, who were largely Catholic. So when I started this project 10 years ago, the centrality of the political question was the governing framework in which the war years came to be analysed, though fragments of social and cultural histories had started to emerge, which offered a more complicated picture. So my book is the first to highlight this historical inconsistency and to tie up ends it didn't meet. It puts the agency of groups and individuals into the foreground to look anew at Irish attitudes and behaviour towards a conflict. And it concentrates on ordinary people who have been forgotten. The men, women and children who are behind Ireland's war effort on the home front, both in Ireland and in diaspora communities worldwide. Some of these included the Kirwan sisters in County Mayo in the west of Ireland, dressed in these magnificent costumes to depict the colours of the Allies. The eight-year-old Maureen McKeown, who won a prize for her costume in a children's fundraiser for the war effort in Belfast. The book also includes people who experienced a much darker side of the war effort. The community of Queenstown, now Cove in County Cork, which had to deal with the horrors of the sinking of the Lusitania on the 7th of May 1915, and the working class families in Dublin, whose pain for the loss of sons and husbands in the Dardanelles campaign can only be accessed through fragments of memory. So by piecing together multiple histories and by paying close attention to chronology and contingent events, my book argues two important points that revise our understanding of the wartime Irish and of pre-independence Ireland. Firstly, that support for the war effort amongst nationalist, last, nationalists lasted for much longer than is commonly thought. And secondly, that there was a surprising degree of cross-confessional cooperation in the war effort between Irish Protestants and Catholics a finding which was prevalent and indeed is depicted in these photographs, but one which has been squeezed out and not mentioned in any other historical work of this period. So in a way, my book also demonstrates how particular historical lenses that we use to view the past can have a distorting effect, squeezing out or obscuring historical realities because they do not fit the lens in which we come to interpret our evidence. 
So I hope this has given you just a flavour of what the book is about and I'm really interested to know what you think about it as well. You can of course pick up a copy on the Bloomsbury website and they've even given me a 35% off voucher which I'm very happy to share with you so just drop me a message on Twitter and I'll sort that out. But in the meantime thank you very much for watching and keep safe.